guys, uh, Jay Scott, Jay Scott Outdoors. I'm here in the Go Hunt office, headquarters here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I get a bunch of questions about tripods, some of the different tripods I use, how I use tripods to find more game. One of the things that I wanna do when I'm glassing is I prefer to sit. I prefer to sit like this. I wanna get as low to the ground as I possibly can. Um, that way I'm as stable as possible. Now I see a lot of people raise this center post right here. So it's gonna be, you know, if I have the binos on here, I, I'm gonna need to raise the center post. In other words, if I'm down here, I can't hunch down. And if I do, I won't be able to do it very long. Rather than use this center post right here, I'm gonna use my legs. So I'm going to extend these legs in a spot where I can get the binos the ocular part of the lens right here in front of my face. If you see this, even when it's tightened, you see it's got a little bit of play here. Very rarely will you see me glassing with this center post. I use my legs for stability. Now, one of the mistakes I see people make is you see that this particular tripod um, has four sections. And as you go in each section, you see the diameter here of the tripod leg. It's, it's heavier, thinner, thinner, and thinnest. Well, in my opinion, this part of the tripod is the weakest part. So what I want to do is I want to use my thicker leg, my thicker walled leg, first. I don't want to use this last leg unless I have to. What I'm trying to do here is build a solid foundation where I can sit, I, I um, glass with my left hand on the bar. You'll see some guys and it's perfectly fine that have the bar here or a bunch of different variations. I like to have my left hand here on the arm and I like to have my right hand where I can use this, the tilt part of this Sure VA5 head. I've got the pan left to right, so it's real smooth. And I, I, want, I want to be able to just touch it with my finger like this, because what I end up doing is I end up getting my eyes right here next to the ocular lens. And a lot of times I'm just using my nose up against the ocular lenses to glass back and forth. And I keep my left hand right here just to give a little bit of direction and a little bit of support. Now, if I'm looking downhill, I obviously have to lower this, this tilt here and look down. So now I'm looking down and if I'm panning across, this is exactly how I'd be doing. Now, if you notice from a sitting position right here, I have a real solid platform. So I can pretty much glass from, from this angle all the way over to this angle without moving. I may be moving just slightly, but you'll see my core is pretty much straight behind the center post. Some common mistakes that I see people from a mechanical standpoint using the tripod is they either have this tilt too rigid. You see how it's, it's real herky-jerky? I want it just loose enough so that it smoothly works up and down. The other thing is they can have the horizontal pan. You can tighten it here or loosen it. You see how loose, it's very loose there and it can be too loose. And you want just enough tension on there. So if I'm glassing across and boom, I find a buck, I wanna be able to let my hands up like this and literally have my eyes and, and be focused right there on that deer. The more smooth this can be, the more your eyes will be able to focus in the binos, the more you'll be able to pick up stuff, the more vibration and more, you know, not smooth is when your eyes are gonna have to be straining because this is shaking. One of the positive things about being low to the ground like that is a lot of situations we have wind and when you're glassing, you try and get as low as you can and as solid as you can because you don't want this you don't want this shaking. So if I'm sitting on a glassing stool, all of a sudden the tripod is up at this length, or if I'm standing, there's more distance between the ground and where the binos are, which is gonna create vibration. The least amount of vibration that you can create creates more stability. The more stability you create, 
the easier it is and better glassing that you're gonna have and longer that you can sit here and look through the binoculars. This is what they call twist locks. And twist locks for me are the most user friendly. This is just a simple twist and these legs really move in and out. The other thing with a lever lock is you're gonna get a lot of squeaking. If you notice, this is real quiet. This is a four section tripod. And one of the things that's so nice about this compared to say a three section tripod, so this is fully extended, okay? This breaks down a lot smaller and goes in my pack than say a three section tripod that, that, that only has three sections is going to be longer. So when I've got this completely broke down, notice the height. It's very short, it's very compact, and this is going to fit in my pack a lot better than a three section. A tripod like this is a real common for people that are trying to cut weight. They're using carbon fiber, which this Sure is made out of. Um, and, and they're also trying to create as little, um, as unobtrusive as you can in your backpack. Um, this will easily fit inside the bag of a backpack. It will easily fit outside in the outside pocket with a strap around it. There's just a lot of things you can do with a tripod like, like this. Now I'm about six, two and a half, and at six, two and a half, in order for me to be able to stand behind this tripod, I'm going to have to loosen right here and extend this center post, okay? So I will be able to stand glassing behind this, and this will work, and this is certainly better. This setup right here, fully extended, is, is not as stable as it was when I was on the ground, but it's gonna be a lot more stable than if I'm just sitting here holding the binos. I still have the same principles. I'm standing upright. I've got my left hand here, which I, from here, my right hand here, which I can control the tilt. I can control the horizontal right here. I get it just where I want it, okay? And it, I'm just slowly panning and I'm just looking. And now I want this. So if I were to find something, I can let go and it stays right on. So my binoculars or my spotting scope, because of the amount of tension I have on there, it stays right on the target. And that's what you want. So now if my binos are there and I want to take my spotting scope, all I'm going to do is, there's a lock lever over here and then press this button and this, this plate slides out. Get your binos and get your spotting scope lined up so that when you switch from binos to spotting scope, this never moves. So many people, because they don't have these two in conjunction with each other, they lose the animal and then they have to go put the binos back on and relocate the animal. Guys, I hope these tips have helped you out in some way. If you have any questions, you have any comments, please drop them in the comments box below. I appreciate all the feedback. Uh, me or one of the Go Hunt guys will get back to you. And uh, thanks for watching.